10 rendezvous were accomplished during the Gemini program. The techniques varied, for this maneuver is important to Project Apollo. The lunar module, on returning from the surface of the moon, must rendezvous and dock with the command and service module. In Gemini, conditions of lunar orbit were simulated in Earth orbit, and confidence for Apollo grew. On four of the Gemini missions, the rendezvous target was the Agena space vehicle. During the program, the Gemini astronauts located and docked with the Agenas nine times, developing experience and confidence in this important maneuver. This experience is vital to the lunar mission, for the Apollo astronauts will dock twice on their journey from the Earth to the Moon and back. As the spacecraft moved in, docking lights aboard the vehicle helped guide the pilot during the final stages of the maneuver. Okay, Gemini 8, it looks good here from the ground. Uh, we're showing tone rigid. Uh, everything looks good from the docking. Okay, uh, we're going to cycle our stop on switch now. Uh, Roger. The flight, we are down. But not everything always went according to plan. On Gemini 8, a thruster failed, causing excessive yaw and roll. Unable to find the source of trouble, Command Pilot Armstrong undocked. The roll rate accelerated, reaching an alarming one revolution per second. But Armstrong fought and won his struggle to regain control, and he brought Gemini 8 to a safe landing. On Gemini 9, when an Atlas rocket failed to place the Agena into orbit, a substitute docking target was launched. Trouble developed on the new target when its shroud failed to separate, leaving what the astronauts quickly named the Angry Alligator. Although the docking maneuver had to be canceled, the flight plan was revised so the astronauts could go on to practice rendezvous two more times, developing faith in their ability to cope with adversity and to learn from the unexpected. On two missions, the Gemini astronauts actually assembled a new spacecraft in orbit, the combined Agena and Gemini. After docking, they commanded the Agena to restart its own rocket engine. On one mission, this space-built vehicle was flown to a record altitude of 851 miles. From their vantage point in space, the astronauts had a spectacular view of our planet. Although flight experience was the primary objective of Gemini, the program offered a unique space laboratory to science, medicine, and technology. More than 50 experiments were carried on the Gemini spacecraft. Many were repeated on several flights. One experiment was photography of the Earth. Vast areas never seen by man in their entirety were studied. More than 2,000 photographs were taken from space during the Gemini program. These pictures are being used to correct maps and to provide oceanographers, geologists, and geographers with new information about the Earth.
Gemini astronauts also use their cameras to photograph cloud patterns and other atmospheric phenomena. This work supplemented information obtained from unmanned weather satellites. Hundreds of high-resolution photographs were made to provide new knowledge about the weather of the world. The astronomical sciences also benefited from Gemini, for the orbiting spacecraft enables scientists to send instruments far above the blanket of atmosphere, which filters and obscures a variety of phenomena. On Gemini 12, an eclipse of the sun was photographed for the first time from space. The results of scientific research conducted on Gemini have been made available to the world, not only helping to advance man's knowledge, but promoting a greater measure of understanding among nations. Three of the manned Gemini missions were flown to investigate the problems of long-duration spaceflight. Gemini 4 was a four-day mission. Gemini 5, eight days. On Gemini 7, astronauts Lovell and Borman spent two weightless weeks in space. These flights confirmed the endurance of man and his new spacecraft systems. They showed that an astronaut can live in space longer than is required for a round trip to the moon and thus paved the way for Project Apollo. Using the Agena space vehicle, the astronauts also experimented with a new technique for holding their spacecraft's attitude fixed with respect to the Earth. Normally, this requires the continuous use of fuel. Gina's just about horizontal with us right now. And what we're going to do is put in a very small thrust. But on two missions, a Dacron tether was attached between the spacecraft and the Agena. The Agena, slightly nearer the Earth, was pulled more strongly by gravity than was the spacecraft. This small difference was enough to stabilize the vehicles so they could maintain their position without use of fuel. This technique has important implications for future space missions. Perhaps the most spectacular experiment of the Gemini program was extravehicular activity. Astronaut Ed White made the first American walk in space. Spurts of gas from White's handheld maneuvering device thrust him in the desired direction. The floating object in the foreground is the astronaut's overglove left behind in the spacecraft. In contrast to Ed White's successful 20-minute walk in space, the next three men to venture outside their spacecraft encountered unexpected difficulties. Although some useful work was accomplished, including on one mission, the historic retrieval of a scientific experiment left behind on an earlier flight, workloads were higher than anticipated. The astronauts had trouble stabilizing themselves outside the spacecraft. All three walks had to be terminated early. Yeah, let me hang on to you. I got a rest here, I'm at, though. Okay. Yeah, I'm pooped. 